Next on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend, a portion of I-10 remains closed this morning after a deadly crash last night. We have the details. And a tough loss for the UTEP Miners football team. They traveled to Albuquerque for the Gildan Bowl. We have all the highlights. Also, new details on the execution-style shooting of two New York City police officers. Why police are calling it a target on law enforcement. And in Storm Track Weather, Dan. Well, those clouds have been moving through overnight. Will they bring any rain to our area? We'll talk about that coming up in your Storm Track weather forecast. It's all the news you need to start your Sunday, December 21st, 2014. ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso weekend starts now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso weekend. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Sunday morning. I'm Josie Ortegon. We have a traffic alert for you this morning as you're heading out for the day. A portion of I-10 remains closed. Police are still investigating a major crash that happened last night on I-10 near Mesquite. And again, that portion of the highway remains closed this morning. Now, this crash happened yesterday around 6 in the evening just south of Las Cruces on I-10 East near Mesquite. New Mexico State Police say seven vehicles were involved, including a semi-truck. We've learned an Arizona woman was killed. Two people were airlifted to El Paso and others were taken to the hospital. No word yet on the extent of their injuries. The crash happened right where traffic begins to bottleneck before the Mesquite Bridge construction zone. And drivers are being reminded once again to slow down when traveling that stretch of the highway. Distracted driving is a big factor nowadays, especially in the construction zone, especially with um, my understanding is with the fuel prices being down, everyone now is traveling on, on, on the road. So we were just asking the distracted driving, please pull over if you're tired. Please don't drink your drink as well. And uh, please be prepared. We, we had this highway shut down. We had people here stuck on this highway for two hours. Keep your medications, keep fuel in your vehicle, keep a first aid kit, uh, go bag, blankets, whatever, some additional food and water. Because you never know when something like this is going to happen. And again, that portion of I-10 is still closed, according to the Department of Transportation. They don't expect it to reopen until sometime this morning. They're still investigating the crash. So if you're headed east from Las Cruces to El Paso, you want to exit at Avenida de Mesilla or University Avenue, where you can access the frontage roads in order to enter back onto I-10 after Mesquite. We'll keep you updated on air and online at KVIA.com. And the Miners tried to catch their first bowl win since 1967 yesterday at the Gildan New Mexico Bowl in Albuquerque. ABC 7's Rick Cabrera was there, and he has the coaches and the players' reaction to the loss. If the Miners wanted to get a win in the Gildan New Mexico Bowl today, we knew they were going to have to dominate in time of possession and run the ball. Well, they did dominate in time of possession, but they couldn't run the ball very well at all. They got too much penetration. You know, when you don't have a run game, it's hard to pass on on the team and you know I'm, uh, even in the past game when they were getting pressure bringing stuff off the edge we didn't pick it up um, some of that was on me for you know not getting the ball out on time. I told them uh, I'm extremely proud of them uh, you know especially the senior class this is a group of young men that uh, decided to stop the bleeding on eight straight losing seasons and they made a commitment to doing that and no matter what these young men do uh, they'll always be winners. I told the team that I love them and I told the younger guys come back ready to work because uh, we're going to build on this thing. We just got to feed off of it. You know, they, they set this foundation and it's our job now to come back and work harder than we, did, we ever have. We need to do a good job as coaches recruiting and developing players. Uh, but I think uh, UTEP's turned the corner and, and uh, I really feel the program's heading in the right direction. So UTEP will say goodbye to 28 seniors and they will have some holes to fill in some key spots. But in just his second season to take the Miners to a bowl game, I know head coach Sean Kugler is feeling good about the future and the foundation of this program. Reporting from the Gildan New Mexico Bowl in Albuquerque, I'm Rick Cabrera. We'll send it back to you. ABC 7's Louis Del Rio will have all the highlights from yesterday's game later in sports. And moving to storm track weather now, let's get a look at your first forecast with storm tracker Dan Martinez. Dan, it's the first day of winter, but... We're not expecting any sort of wintry weather today, right? A beautiful day in store. Yeah, and actually, we're going to see a warmer day today than what we saw yesterday. But let's talk about clouds and radar. And when we mentioned those clouds at the top of the newscast here, those have been moving through very quietly through the El Paso area. Very thin clouds, too. Nothing really to speak of with bring rain or anything like that. But nonetheless, I want to show you the current temperature out there 40 degrees with those mostly sunny skies. And then notice it feels like 35 degrees with those south southeast winds at 7 miles per hour for Las Cruces. 
We're feeling like 32 degrees out there. Those winds are calm, thank goodness, but definitely still a cold morning out right now. According to our ABC7 Storm Track Weather Net, sponsored by the Mattress Firm, you notice 41 degrees at KVIA Studios, 35 degrees at the War Eagles Air Museum, and then Nolan Richardson at 38 degrees. Here's a look at your day planner forecast. You notice we'll be in the 50s practically throughout the entire day, starting at noon, rolling through the early part of your day. Josie? Okay, thanks, Dan. And we're learning more about a pedestrian-involved incident that happened Friday night. Police believe the man was intoxicated when he was hit by a car. It happened just before 11 p.m. at 750 North Carolina in the Lower Valley. Police say the 60-year-old man stepped in front of the car and he suffered life-threatening injuries. The driver is not facing any charges at this time. And a fire severely damaged a Las Cruces home yesterday. This happened around 7 a.m. yesterday morning at the 1200 block of Branding Iron Circle. Neighbors saw smoke coming from a mobile home. Fortunately, no one was home at the time. Several rooms suffered heavy fire damage. The cause of the fire is still unknown. And residents of Socorro were at the polls yesterday voting for a new city rep for District 4. The county's website shows Jose Anthony Gandara ahead with 51% of the vote. Al Gutierrez has 37 percent and Teresa Marty has about 11 percent. The website shows more than 100 people cast their vote. The position opened up after Alderman Joseph Chito Bowling passed away this fall. Turning now to the latest on the execution-style shooting of two police officers in New York. The New York Police Department is mourning the death of their own brothers. Andy Rose has more. They were quite simply assassinated. Two New York City police officers are dead following an ambush Saturday afternoon. Police Commissioner William Bratton says officers Wenji and Lou and Rafael Ramos were shot while they sat in their patrol car in Brooklyn. Both sustained gunshot wounds to the head. Officer Lou and Officer Ramos never had the opportunity to draw their weapons. They may never have actually even seen their assailant, their murderer. The alleged assailant is Ismail Brinsley. His body was found in a nearby subway station. Officials say Brinsley died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Brooklyn residents are shocked and outraged by the violence. We got to take back our communities. This can't happen. If you mad at somebody, be mad at the person that you're mad at. Now we have two families that's missing somebody for the holidays. I don't condone this and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not with it. Investigators say they're looking for a motive, but that Brinsley's social media post indicated bias against law enforcement. The fallen officers were not engaged with the shooter in any way before they were attacked. I'm Andy Rose reporting. And demonstrators are grabbing the attention of shoppers at the Mall of America in Minnesota. Organizers of the, organizers of the Black Lives Matter protest say they want people to know about police brutality that happens against African American men. Mall of American Management says it is considered private property and urged people to gather at an empty lot nearby instead. Protests against racial disparities and police violence have been going on all over the country ever since Michael Brown's death in Ferguson back in August. And new this morning, a police officer in Florida was shot and killed early this morning, a sheriff's spokeswoman said. The suspect is in custody. The fatal shooting happened in a residential area in the pre-dawn hours. According to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, the Sheriff's Office and local police are investigating. Tarpon Springs is located on Florida's Gulf Coast, about 10 miles northwest of Tampa. And President Obama makes a historic change for Cuba, but not everyone is pleased with the decision. Lorena Estrada has more. Today we come as one community. Cuban and American flags waved in the air as a crowd rallied for democracy in Cuba. Signs held high in show of opposition to the Obama administration. See this man surrendering to our to our enemies across the world, and it's very, very, it's very saddening because it's so in contrast to the history of this country and what we've always stood for. One family dressed in black to express their grief. This crowd at Jose Marti Park in Miami taking a stand against President Barack Obama's plan to normalize relations with Cuba. The expectation that he's created now within Cuba is that, you know, Disney World is coming. 
uh, and that will, will not be able to happen. But former Congressman Lincoln Diaz Ballard says that's not the case, not until three things happen. It's the liberation of all political, political prisoners, the legalization of all political parties, the free press and labor unions, and the scheduling of multi-party elections. This large group says they want to see democracy in Cuba and are hopeful that that day will soon come. But they say this wasn't a step in the right direction. This young man in attendance feels differently. I think our community has to decide, are we going to sit on the sidelines and not have a seat at the table? Or are we going to jump on and say, we don't know where this is going. We might not like how fast change is coming to Cuba or how it's coming, but we want to have a say. While South Floridians remain split on the issue, Cuban leader Raul Castro declared victory for the Cuban Revolution Saturday. Saludamos al nuevo año 57 de la Revolución Cubana. He thanked President Obama for a new chapter, but he also reassured this was not the end of communist rule in Cuba. That was Lorena Estrada reporting. Still ahead on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend, an amazing sight on Scenic Drive last night. We'll take you there coming up. And later, four Guantanamo Bay detainees are back in their home country of Afghanistan. We'll have the details coming up. Time now is 8.11. Let's take a live look outside, courtesy of our TxDOT traffic cams this morning. Roads are clear. We haven't had any reports of anything major on the road, so if you are headed out and about, you're good to go. And in storm track weather, Dan. All right, well, you saw some very light cloud coverage on those text dot cameras. Could we expect more for our day today? We'll talk about that coming up. You're watching ABC 7, where news comes first. You're watching ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend with Josie Ortegon and Storm Track Weather with Dan Martinez.